Hi, you're with Chris Hancock on another audio adventure. Today we're looking at how to use the Max for Live plugins from Envelope to create 360 content within the otherwise stereo door of Ableton. These Max for Live plugins by the company Envelope are free and are open source and the link will be in the description. To do 360 audio we require more channels than actually the two channels that Ableton and most other stereo doors give us. So to start using these plugins the first step in the process is grabbing an instance of the master bus and setting up a master bus. This gives us a encoding and decoding <coughs> bus that takes in 16 channels of ambisonic audio which is the format one of the formats involved in 360 audio it needs to be at least four channels and it can be more and it encodes it down into stereo and passes it back to our master channel once we have an instance of the e4l envelope master bus we can now on audio or midi experiment with these other 360 ambisonic based uh, plugins. We will start with the source panner on this audio which is the bell. Note if I look at the ins and outs <coughs> This bell no longer, no longer goes to straight to the master, but rather just goes to the sends, and in particular, only sends to the E4 master channel. You can see over here, it's outputting to the 16 channel E4L master bus. If I am to solo these bells, I cannot hear them until I also solo the E4 master bus. Okay, this source panner opens a world of 360 manipulations. Initially, for starters, we have the radius, which brings the sound closer to the listener. And we can move it further afield. Then there are these other variables, um, azimuth and elevation. This is within the polar mode of this plugin which is what we will talk about within this presentation azimuth is the angle of the sound on the horizontal field so you can hear the sound panning to the right and effectively all the way behind the listener and around to the front again. The spread spreads out the file, the sound into more of a stereo format and we can effectively mono it here. Okay. The elevation allows us to position sounds higher in, on a sort of vertical axis. But note, if you position it at its maximum elevation, um, it effectively is within a sphere and exists above the listener. When such is encoded, the azimuth, the angle of the sound, is basically nullified by the sound being right above the listener. Similarly, if I create an elevation that emulates being under the listener, again, <clears throat> the azimuth angle is nullified. If I turn automation on, note that the azimuth, as well as all the other parameters, can be seen to be uh, automatable. So we can dial in our automation here 
and have the sound circling around the listener. These plugins also work on MIDI channels. So diving into the dub keys here, we have a chord um, plotted out in our MIDI file over here. I'll turn the bells off for the moment. Okay, note that the dub keys are currently sending directly to the masters, but if we use one of the other instances of these plugins, we'll now choose multi to delay, for example. If I drag that onto the keys, note that now it is sending only to the sends, not to the master. The multi-delay here is sending it across to the 16 channel E4L master bus. So once again, if I solo these keys, I cannot hear them until I have also soloed the E4L master bus. Like with most plugins, uh, delay plugins, we have access to variables that are familiar, such as feedback and time, but we also have spread. These are the instances of the delay, and we have the azimuth as well. So you can hear I'm um, st starting the delay here, or behind the listener as an curves around in its delay around there. We can minimize that that spread as well. Just be around the back there and we can we can move its rotation. Happy producing in a 360 sphere. Chris Hancock out.